Welcome to this episode of Midnight Horror Story Stories. In this episode, I want to share a story about a high school in Thailand. There are many Chinese-funded schools in Chiang Mai and Chiang Rai, Thailand. These schools receive special subsidies from the Overseas Community Affairs Council of the Republic of Taiwan, so they adopt the educational system of the Republic of Taiwan. They teach Mandarin using traditional Chinese characters with Zhuyin phonetic notation and raise the flag of the Republic of Taiwan. Although Mandarin schools are welcomed in the local community, there is one high school that is generally avoided by the locals. It is mostly attended by students from other regions, while the locals tend to send their children elsewhere. This high school has a long history. In 1954, one year after the retreat of the nationalist government to Taiwan, it was established by the remnants of the nationalist forces that were left behind in Yunnan and came to Chiang Mai to build this school. It can be said that this school has been around for 68 years, and it has been under the management and funding of the Overseas Community Affairs Council. However, this high school has a legend associated with it. There is a rumor of some mysterious power existing within it. Every year during the freshman welcoming party, there are always rumors of female students mysteriously disappearing. Moreover, the school already had a bad reputation, as incidents of sexual assault often occurred during the freshman welcoming party. The local students believed that sending their children there would be hopeless. But the occasional disappearances of female students plunged the entire school into panic. A girl named Anan from Bangkok was a new student at this high school. Shortly after arriving at the school, she was fortunate enough to meet her roommate, Linda, who was also from Bangkok. Linda had come here to study due to her parents' work and everything felt unfamiliar to her. However, with mutual help from Anan and Linda, they both found some comfort in this unfamiliar environment. However, on the night of the freshman welcoming party, as all the students gathered together and the freshmen became the targets of pranks, Anan became separated from Linda. But Anan caught a glimpse of Linda's figure, at that moment, Linda seemed to be walking unsteadily, possibly due to being drugged. Anan was extremely worried about Linda's condition, so she wanted to approach and check on her. However, halfway there, she was intercepted by senior students who forced her to drink alcohol. By the time she finished drinking, Linda had already disappeared into the crowd. After this freshman welcoming party, Linda mysteriously went missing. Every day, Anan looked at her friend's empty bed, unable to accept it. It seemed that the police also didn't take the case too seriously. So, Anan decided to investigate why Linda had disappeared and find her roommate. Anan began to investigate the disappearance and gradually discovered some clues. She found that among the many teachers at the school, there was a male teacher who seemed to keep many come and thang, child ghost, statues. His neck was adorned with various sizes of come and thang pendants. The come and thang is a sacred symbol in Thai traditional culture, believed to possess magical powers. So, those who worship the come and thang believe that the spirits of these child ghosts can help them with various tasks. But it's strange that this school, which is funded by the Overseas Community Affairs Council of the Republic of Taiwan, would have a teacher who seems to be so superstitious about the Kuomintang, Thang, considering the educational system of the Republic of Taiwan. Anan started delving into the history and legends of the Kuomintang, Thang, hoping to find clues related to the disappearance. During her investigation, she encountered a teacher named Yanni who was knowledgeable about the legends of the Kuomintang. Thang. Yanni told Anan that the Kuomintang Thang is considered a guardian spirit believed to grant wishes. However, if someone abuses the power of the Kuomintang Thang, it can bring about misfortune and disaster. Yanni explained to Anan that the Kuomintang Thang is a form of infant spirit worship where the corpses of deceased infants or fetuses are dried and decorated with various materials. The process involves a ritual performed by a high-ranking monk who infuses the spirit of the child into the figurine, allowing it to be reborn. Anan gradually realized that the disappearance might be connected to the power of the Kuomintang. Thang. She started tracking the teacher who had many Kuomintang Thang statues and noticed some unusual behavior. Every day after school, 
the teacher would go to the market to buy large quantities of meat and then take it to a secluded cottage. Ainan shared her findings with Yanni, who found it highly suspicious because worshipping the common thang doesn't require such large amounts of meat. The cottage seemed very suspicious, and if the missing students were somehow connected to the teacher, there was a possibility that Linda might still be alive. To rescue Linda, Ainan and Yanni decided to take the risk and investigate the cottage, hoping to find Linda and the other missing female students. But as they approached the cottage, Ainan felt that something was off. In the corner of the cottage, there were some candles that looked eerie. Yanni chuckled and whispered to Ainan, let's see what kind of ritual they're preparing. Them? Ainan looked at Yanni and thought, isn't the whole thing just the behavior of a teacher? What do they mean? Yanni made a silent gesture, pointing towards the other side of the cottage. It turned out that the teacher who worshipped the Kuman Thang had arrived, carrying even more meat than before. He seemed to be scanning the area, unaware of their presence. As Ainan was about to rush over, Yanni stopped her. Yanni whispered, let's wait for the teacher to leave before we take any action. Confronting him directly wouldn't be advantageous for us. Ainan considered Yanni's advice, realizing it made sense. So they waited until the teacher left. After the teacher was gone, they cautiously approached the cottage. Strangely enough, when Ainan tried to push the door, she found that it wasn't locked. The room was pitch black and terrifying, with a foul stench permeating the air. Just as Ainan called out Linda's name, someone pushed her forcefully into the room from behind. Ainan fell to the floor, and before she could get up, several people emerged from the darkness and pinned her down. In the darkness of the room, Ainan couldn't see clearly, but she could feel several men pressing her to the ground. After a while, the room was illuminated by candlelight, and two figures slowly walked in from the doorway. By the candlelight, Ainan recognized the two individuals who had accompanied her, Yanni, the teacher, and the teacher who worshipped the common thong. The familiar faces of Yanni and the others vanished, and Yanni's expression turned cold as she explained the ritual process to the teacher who worshipped the common thong. Ainan finally understood that it was all a trap. Yanni, the teacher, was actually a sorceress, and now she was conducting a soul exorcism ritual on Ainan. While Ainan was being firmly held down, the teacher who worshipped the common thang forcefully stuffed raw meat into Ainan's mouth. In agony, Ainan struggled, but what could a single girl do? The teacher who worshipped the common thang asked Yanni. This time, it won't fail again, right? You're running out of time. You made the common thang earn money for you and helped you get the woman you wanted, but everything comes at a price. If you don't find a suitable vessel for the rebirth of the infant spirit soon, you will become the vessel yourself," Yanni replied expressionlessly. The teacher who worshipped the common thang became extremely nervous and said with a contorted face, Ainan, please don't blame me. I'm also being controlled. You must hold on and not end up like your friend. In the midst of Ainan's struggle, she noticed a motionless woman lying in the corner of the room. Though it was difficult to see clearly, it was highly likely to be Linda. Tears filled Ainan's eyes in an instant, and she screamed loudly. The sound was piercing, and suddenly the candlelight in the room went out. The room filled with the laughter of children, accompanied by the sounds of moans and pleasure from men and women. But these sounds were drowned out by the thunderstorm raging outside. It was as if nothing had happened. Ainan and Linda returned to school to continue their studies, but the two teachers never appeared at the school again. However, Linda's personality seemed to have turned into that of a child, with a deep curiosity about everything. And every time Ainan had a meal, she would take out many common thong talismans from her bag and place them on the table. It seemed that she had secretly begun worshipping the common thong as well. And that concludes today's Midnight Horror Story. See you next time.